And uh, I read your first book, and it was a pleasure to know that you were coming back to CBN to talk about your second book, When It All Comes Together. And I, I couldn't help but, you know, stop at chapter one, mm. puzzled. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you write in this first chapter, wearing an off-white suit, I walked with my children down the aisle of the huge sanctuary. My heart was pounding through my chest and I felt nauseated. But it wasn't because of the thousands of people staring at us. It was because the man I had married, the father of my four children, was lying in a casket at the end of the aisle. Hmm. Take, us, take us there for a moment. Yeah, that was, that day was not even real. To, I mean, it was just horrible. I, you know, I thought I was thinking about all the good times we had. I was thinking about how much life he had, how much vibrancy, um, almost bigger than life. You know, he always saw things in big ways. Nothing was unconquerable, so to speak. And so, that to see him there, it just didn't make sense. I was puzzled. I was bewildered. I was, I was knocked off kilter, and then having to walk my children down that same aisle, wondering what they're thinking, how they're going to handle it, yeah. what are they going to do during the service. So that, they're, that's exactly it, their daddy, you know, and so that was, a, it was really difficult. And the grief was major. It yeah. was extreme for us. Even though you guys had divorced, you know, but still, this was the person that oh, you yeah. had built. Yeah, you know, with. honestly, at that time, we had separated for two years and divorced for two years. So I wasn't in his life technically for four years. You know, so that's a, that's a period of time. I didn't know who he was in his life at that time. I didn't know who, were, who was surrounding him at that time. But going back down memory lane, surely it just brought so much um, in, in perspective, but as well, the pain was still so strong yeah. seeing him like I, that. I can't imagine. Yes. I can't imagine that. And that was almost six years ago. Yes. Is that right? August will be six August years? August will be six years. Wow. Well, you have certainly overcome a lot. Yeah. Um, by the grace of God. All by the grace of God. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's Nobody by His grace. God. Exactly. You've overcome betrayal, heartbreak, grief and loss while holding on to your faith. How has your faith developed over the last seven, mm -hmm. six, seven years? You know, it's amazing. I often tell people it's like the matrix now because <laughs> you can be doing spiritual warfare while brushing your teeth or cooking some food in the kitchen. That is true. Because when you walk through it, for a long season of time, you don't even realize how much faith you have or how much more anointing that you have because you've been just doing it. You've just been doing it, you've been doing it. And now when you uh, pray for people, it's, um, it's more intense. Yeah. It's more uh, powerful because you've walked down that valley or when you're ministering to someone for deliverance mm. who may be going through a betrayal at the time or may be going through heartache from a lost loved one, you know exactly where to hone in into, you know where to go, where to target because of what you've been through. Yeah. And so I can tell you, uh, you don't necessarily all of a sudden just realize it, but it's there yeah, when, when you come through it. The Riva six years ago and the Riva today, talk about the difference. It's a, it's a difference. I, I'm, honestly, it's almost partially, I can say, the scales have fallen off my eyes. You know, I see the two worlds. I see the light and the dark. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that God's light dispels the darkness, but at the same time, I didn't realize how dark things could be. Wow. And so before it was just, if you just live right, if you live holy, everything's going to be okay. You don't have to worry about the dark as well. You can go in there and do your warfare and come on back out. But it's when you realize that there's trials and tribulations that you will walk through, yeah. it's a whole different temperature. So for me, the person that I was before and the person who I am now, I feel like I'm more of a warrior now for God. I feel like I can stand more for God. I, can, I feel like I have a boldness mm. for God that I thought I had before, but I really was only scratching the surface. It's amazing, amazing. Well, in your book, you know, when it all comes together, you equate life to pieces of a puzzle. Yes. You know, and how we don't always see how this puzzle is to come together or what pieces are gonna to come together and how God, you know, uses 
brokenness in yes. our lives. Yes. You have been, I mean, did you ever ask God, why all of this? Yeah, that's the puzzle. Why, who, how, I mean, you when? had it all, Lisa, yeah. seemingly, yeah. you know? You yes. had this church, a new destiny. You had this pastor husband who was, I mean, anointed, powerful mm -hmm. preacher, you know, and then mm -hmm. everything, you lost everything. Everything, yeah, my home, you know, where we were living, the ministry, you know, income, it was, everything was gone. And so that's the time where God shows up mm -hmm. in the darkest places, but the question is, are you seeing, are you looking for him? Wow. Because he's there, he's speaking to you, the question is, are you listening? And so this is the, this is part of the trial, when bad things happen in your life, even though you don't understand the chaos, you don't understand being discombobulated, mm -hmm. you don't understand all of this is happening, but yeah. God is a constant. Yeah. And he knows how to put it together again. That's really what the book is about. And I talk about that and ask how Paul had a vision. That's he right. had a dream Macedonia. and to go to Macedonia <laughs> and the man from Macedonia. Sometimes yeah. God will give you a glimpse of where you are to go, mm -hmm. but he doesn't give you all the pieces. He didn't tell Paul he was going to meet Lydia first. He, he was going to meet the slave girl, yeah. that he was going to be beaten and thrown into jail and that he was going to have to deal with the magistrates and the officers. He didn't tell Paul all of that. All he said was, there's a man from Macedonia. Macedonia, that's, right. that's you and me. And then eventually we realized that the man from Macedonia was the jailer, the Absolutely. one to get saved. And so that's how God does us. He'll give you a glimpse of your future, but the purpose of what we have to do is to keep looking at the picture on the box of the puzzles. Wow. So every time you put a jigsaw puzzle together, there's always a picture to look to. Whatever God has given you the glimpse of, yeah. that's what you focus on. Absolutely. Yes. And so many people can relate to that yes. right now. So many women who are going to be watching this, you know, they feel like, God's left them, mm -hmm. like they're alone. Mm -hmm. They have no hope. Mm -hmm. But you can say to them, what would you say to them? I would tell them that God has a hope and a future for you. Uh, you know, especially as a woman, you know, it's, it's very difficult when your husband was a great provider. Mm -hmm. And although you were there by his side building and doing everything, two, you know, is better than one, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And so when you find yourself alone and a single mom, mm -hmm. and you find yourself trying to grasp how to put pieces together, when you feel rejected, who's going to want me? You mm -hmm. know, sometimes you, you, those feelings of, why did he do this to me? What was wrong with me? All those types of questions. Am I going to be okay with, you know, my, my children? Am I going to be all that they can, that they need? And I have a special needs son too, you know, yeah. and dealing with, you know, I have to be a caregiver. And I know women who go through losing everything, questions of rejection, it does. It, it comes yes. in their spirit, permeates yes. their spirit. And so this is where God wants to bring the healing in. But we always try to make sense of the puzzle. We always yeah. try to make sense of what, but God says, no, don't make sense of the puzzle. Make sense of me. Amen. Make sense of my anointing in your Amen. life. Make sense of my word. Make sense of my worship in your life. And when you focus on that, <laughs> that's when everything comes together. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, Reva, you are now pastoring. Yes. Majestic life, yes. church, and but you say um, you never saw, of course, yourself doing that. No. Um, and you also say that there are no superstars at your church. That's what I said. Jesus is the only celebrity. That's it. Um, you know, well, how is that different than what was happening at New well, Destiny? Well, you know, when we started New Destiny in '96, you know, we had people come in. It was we we didn't have any major supporters, but it was a lot of charisma. It was just a lot of lights and cameras. It was amazing. Yeah. But God said this time around, He says, "Don't grow the church, grow the sheep." Mm. And that's what I did. I just focused on growing the sheep. She said, don't advertise, don't do anything. Now, that was the word he gave to me. Wow. It was polar opposite of how people normally build church yeah. with advertisements, commercial. Yes. We didn't do any of that. We were on the backside of a parking lot, and I'm just pouring into the sheep, pouring into sheep. And he says, at this church, if you bring entertainment to bring people in, then it's going to take entertainment to keep them. He says, but if you let my spirit bring the people in, yes. then it's my spirit that will keep them. And so we were just pouring into the sheep, loving in the, on the members. And God was sending people without advertisement. Before we knew it, we had over 500 people wow. in that little strip mall right there. Praise but God. I felt comfortable there. I didn't want to go to another building. I felt comfortable. <laughs> but we have a team-based ministry as well. So there is no celebrity at our church but Jesus. In other words, if I'm not there, the church ought to run. If I'm yeah, not there, absolutely. then the church should still grow because as long as the Holy Spirit is there, then the power of God will be there. It's not built around it's a personality. It's not built around a personality. I love that. No, not at all. That, that's the way God intends it. Yes, amen. Absolutely, amen. absolutely. Well, you talk a lot in the book about defining moments. Yes. Um, 
in your life. What are a few that you've seen in the last six, seven years? Even with pastoring, you know, even, even in that chapter with Divining Moments, I talk about getting your second win yeah. because there are times when you're so exhausted. And I used to run track and and there would be times I didn't think I could get to the finish and I, and I had another lap to run, but it, would be, it was there when you press, be not weary and well doing because in due yeah. season, you will reap if you faint not. And so when you don't faint, that's when that, mm, that press yeah. comes in, that second win, and you have more energy than you had than yes. when you started. And so for me, that was a defining moment for me was to say, I'm gonna step out because you said God, but I'm weary, I'm tired, mm -hmm. I feel weak, I feel fragile, my heart is broken, yeah. and you're calling me to do this too. But God, because you're calling me, I'm gonna do it. And that's when the second win came. It was like sometimes people don't understand that you have to exhaust yourself of yourself. Wow, that's good. Before the power of God really can Thank overtake you, oh you. And that's what God did for me. Amen. That was a major defining moment. And you even me. talked about how God built up your stamina to be a yes. pastor with everything that was happening. Yes, because you know, pastoring is warfare as well, it's spiritual. It and so you have a lot going on in the natural, but when you're pastoring, there's so much more going on in the spirit. Absolutely. And I needed him and he strengthened me. He gave me strength to endure. <laughs> he, he certainly did. Well, Reva, you've, you've also had to um, forgive a lot of people. Yes. Uh, and you say that, you know, after things happened the way they did with you and, and Zachary, that people were blaming you. Mm -hmm. You know, people were blaming you for the divorce, blaming mm -hmm. you for his problems, uh, blaming you for his death mm -hmm. even, especially on social media. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And yet you say, why didn't they blame the people who were in his entourage right. who w wouldn't check him and say, hey, mm -hmm. Pastor, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. and Talk you know, about and that. And that, that was very hard because... I wasn't even in the you know in the world yeah. that he was in anymore. But that's that's the problem with social media at time. People just take sound bites and they run with them, yeah. you know. But I can honestly say over time that God vindicated me because yeah. the truth will always come out. Anything yes. you do in darkness will come out in the light. Um, the good that you do in darkness will come out in the that's light. Right. The bad you is going to come out into. And so thank God that He vindicated. But that was another way the enemy was trying to bring distraction my way. You yeah. know, anytime you're slandered, the first thing you want to do is stand up and defend yourself. Yeah. But God many times says, "Let me handle it." I'm your Vengeance defender. is mine, saith the Lord. And when God does it, oh. It's done. <laughs> you know? He does it so much better than we do. He does it so much better than we could do. Yes. Absolutely. And the forgiveness. Talk, that's yeah. a hard thing That's a hard people. thing to do. Forgiveness is extremely difficult in your flesh. And so you can never forgive perfectly in your flesh. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Bible says you have to pray for those that despite, despitefully use you or, or try to do harm to you. You've got to love your enemies. How do you do that? You only can do that through the power of God. Absolutely. And it takes you praying for that person. It takes you interceding for them. And that's a, the getting over that hump. But once you start doing that and get in the rhythm of praying for them, yeah. you start really desiring that their soul is saved. You're desiring yes. that they're going to be okay. And you can't help but forgive them because yeah. now you're looking at them through the love of God and through the yes. eyes of God. Forgiveness always sets the precedence for um, miracles. Yes. It sets the, uh, the, the, the way that you should go for the blessings of God to come into your life. It, it just sets it. It's, yes. it's just where you have to start. And so people who can't forgive, they're never going to get to the point where God can get them to their perfect destination. Absolutely. Absolutely. Paula White is now the pastor of New Destiny. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that was very difficult as well because Zach was a breeder of leaders. And so even though I wasn't there, I knew who he would want in the, in the place of pastoring yeah. or in the transition. And even as the co-founder of a New Destiny Christian Center, I really felt that we should be able to transition it as a team to yeah. put the right people in. And so my personal opinion is I don't think that she is the person sh that should be over New Destiny Christian yeah. Center. However, like I said, you live in forgiveness. You walk in the power of God. Right. And so I, that, those things we don't really focus on, yeah. uh, me and the kids and our church, we just keep moving, you know. But as far as her being in that position, she's there now. And however God chooses to use it, let him do it. Amen. You mentioned your children. How are they doing? They're How doing are they adjusting great. to life without dad? They're doing great. They still have trigger moments. Yeah. You know, you still definitely have a trigger moment in life as far as um, 
milestones, you know, graduating yeah. from college, okay, yeah. graduating from high school, yeah. getting your driver's license. You want your dad to be there. Yeah. You know, soon I'm sure they're going to be walking down the aisle. They're going to want their dad there. So those trigger moments are difficult. But as far as the healing of the heart, mm -hmm. they've been doing very well. Wonderful. Yes. I love what you say about due seasons. Yes. D-E-W. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that was you know, so the powerful. Do, the do of God, yes. you know, that's where you get saturated in his presence. And that's so that then you can do D-O, yes. <laughs> do what he's called you to do. And then when you do, then you're in your do, D-U-E season. It. So it's like saturating in his presence gets you the power to do what he's called you to do. And then you can reap your due season. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned about remarrying, but mm -hmm. how God said that it, it wasn't the time because mm -hmm. the person that you married would probably get the credit for how new, uh, what majestic right. life was, right. was doing. And only God can get the glory. You know, I don't get the glory. God gets the glory. And sometimes, you know, being a, a single female pastor, if I married early on if, and it became successful, surely people would say, oh, it's because she married that guy, yeah, you know, or she yeah. because you, and this is, this is the way I view <laughs> it, you know, and I really believe that God wanted it this way so that he can get, you know, anytime you see in scripture, he always starts yeah. with the little yes. and he's, and it has to be small because <laughs> yes. no one can say it was because of that person's right. strength, that person's charisma, but it was because of the power of God. And I think that's what he's doing in my life. And so, but I am ready, you know, I think now it's I a mean, you're season. a beautiful woman. Oh, thank you. And I thank know you. that there are people who are like interested, Thank you know, you in that. you dating or. Yeah, my church is ready too. Before the guys at the church, they didn't want anybody coming around me, but now <laughs> like, okay, Pastor Eva, it's, it's, Pastor Eva, it's time. It's time for you to start dating and, and my kids are ready for me to start dating too. So I believe the season is here. And yeah. so when you look back, Reva, and you think about everything that you've gone through in the last six, seven, eight years, is it all making more sense now? Oh, yeah. Pieces are coming together. All the pieces are coming together. And I understand what it means when God says he would uh, work it together for your good. I understand that. He'll take the good, the bad, the ugly, all the pieces, and he can still work it together for your good. And I've, I've seen him do it live and in color. <laughs> you know, I'll just work it out for my good. Looking at the camera and saying to the women who are watching, um, it may not make sense right now what you're going through, the pain, whatever, disappointment, but God has a plan. Share that in your own heart way. Yes. I just want to share with you that you may be broken now. You might be t crying. Even in the night season, people may not even know how broken you are, but God knows and he sees all. I want to encourage you not to be bitter. I want to encourage you not to find yourself in a victim's mentality, but know that you are wonderfully created by God. And he loves you so much that he's kept your destiny intact. Today, be encouraged because God wants to put all the pieces of your life together. And even when naysayers come around, even when those that come around to say that you can never do it, it'll never work, I want to encourage you to know that with God, all things are possible. So what looks impossible, God says, I can turn that around and work it for your good. Your situation may require a miracle. That means you're a candidate for a miracle. So today, be encouraged. I have a testimony for you to glean off of. And the Bible says that's how we overcome the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. God is no respecter of persons. And no matter if you lost your home, you lost a loved one, maybe you lost a child, or maybe a child is wayward, or maybe in you, you just lost your drive for life. God says today, Grab a hold of me and my will is perfect in your life. And I'm going to take you to the place that I've always said that you were to go before you were even conceived in your mother's womb. God said, I knew you. And he says, my plans for you are still intact. Be encouraged. Thank you so much. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Wow. For